Welcome back to Trash It. Now, before you click out, I can see that you see just Celia and I and a very special guest. But before I introduce the special guest, I welcome my gorgeous Celia back on the show. Hello. She's the favorite co-host of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And if you're asking who is this gorgeous lady sharing the platform today with myself and Celia, it's the one and only Miss Sahara. Hello, Miss Sahara. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Before <laughs> I let everyone have a feel of who Miss Sahara is, there's a little thing I've typed up here. So I'll just talk about okay. who Miss Sahara <laughs> is and then we'll take you on from here. Yeah. Miss Sahara, as I've mentioned earlier, is a British Nigerian beauty queen, a fashion model. She's a singer, as you can see from my mic, it's very snazzy. Yeah. And a human <laughs> rights and a human rights advocate. She's known for representing Nigeria in the international beauty pageant to draw attention to the plight of the LBGTQ plus people in Africa. Mm -hmm. In 2011, she became the first Nigerian trans woman to come out publicly on international press during Miss, during Miss International Queen Beauty Pageant in Thailand. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on 19th of July in 2014, she was crowned the first ever Super Sienna World in Milan, in the Philippines, making mm -hmm. her the first black trans woman to be crowned winner of such a very international beauty competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see you're cheesy there. Yeah. <laughs> After winning this Super Sienna, you founded um, the Global Trans Awareness Foundation. It's around news organization called Trans Valid. Yeah. And you're a very critical advocate of what's going on with the LBGT community around the fines and the community sentences, or sentences, not even community sentences, a prison sentence that Nigeria sort of prescribed with anyone known yeah. to support the community. And yeah. obviously, she's well known on all over the catwalks Milan, New York, Fashion Week. She, she's got off the scene, Milan yeah, yeah. Fashion Week. That's ranges from, from different fashion <laughs> blogs to magazine internationally. Miss Sarah, you're welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. That is, uh, wow. That was you would do our research here in, in Trashy. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we said earlier, what we want to do today, really and truly, is just to know who you are. Because Celia and I, we're very okay. vast in everyone that we bring on the show. But there's still a group of people that don't know me, sir, Mr. Hara. Yeah. So, as a trans woman, there's a lot of misunderstanding around who is a transgender. Especially mm -hmm. because of, I don't know if you know, a Nigerian celebrity called Bob Risky. Yes. Okay. So, mm -hmm. there's a misconception of who a trans person or a trans woman is. So, as a trans woman, could you just... Take us out of the dark age, so to say. Okay, so um, so a person is trans. For example, you ladies are cis, cisgender. So there is a thing called transgender and cisgender. That is how we're made up. And then they have t intersex people. Uh, a cis person is someone who was born and they're okay with their... I'll keep it very in the layman term. I really mm. say they're okay with their, with their uh, gender assigned at birth. You know, like name assigned at birth and everything assigned at birth. They're fine with it. A trans person has like, um, they, you know, they were born and somehow their brain did not match the bodies that they were born in. So um, the brain is telling them to do something else and the physical is behaving or doing something else. And then you're like, what the hell is going on? So it's medical and it's not very uncommon as people think it is. It's very tight to be happening all, all for many, many centuries, it's always been known. It's just that maybe history books keep, keep on deleting uh, trans people. Uh, but it's very, it's totally normal. It's very human. It's like giving birth to an intersex person. It's very normal to, to having someone who is uh, perhaps born handicapped. Uh, it's very normal. And still, people, with, people who are handicapped or people who are, I, I, I always say, differently abled are still... Um, are still human beings and we still treat them we should still treat them all with respect despite the fact that uh, you know we live in a world where people are still very um 
ill-informed on what it means to be a human. You know, uh, we have trans species and fishes and animals. We have gay fishes. We have gay animals. So uh, I think wow. the only the only animal in the human in the animal kingdom that that is against, or rather, the species that is against trans or LGBT people are humans. I think because I don't know <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> We use religion against state and culture and say that it's not, it's an African, it's on, it's on, um, it's on, it's inhuman for us to be in the LGBT people, in the LGBT community. Uh, so, yeah, so it is a, a normal human biological occurrence that is even more common than you would think. There are lots of trans people who don't go ahead and become like me. There are lots of trans people who just live their lives quietly and just do their own thing. Uh, just like there are lots of gay people in Nigeria who are married to opposite sex yeah. in Nigeria. Uh, just because of the way Nigerians treat them, they refuse to come out openly. So, and this is the part that really saddens me because I wish that Nigerians would be a bit more open and not push them on the ground. By doing so, you're hurting your daughters and your sons because uh, these women, if, it's a, if a woman is a lesbian, she will marry a man, she might marry your son. And your son will never have true love because they are marrying someone who loves someone else. Yeah. Same with vice versa when it, the person is also a gay man. So, yeah, I remember when, you know, uh, they passed that law in Nigeria and I kept saying, you know, Nigerians are ill-educated on the subject and we need more dialogue. We need to platform more LGBT people. But Nigerian Broadcasting Commission is vehemently against it. So... Yeah, so let me let me not go too deep into okay. Nigeria yet because I'm <laughs> I'm yeah, jumping ahead. I know, I'm I know. Yeah. jumping ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. We'll still yeah. cover it. And I know yeah. she's got questions. <clears throat> but you've touched on something, and for yeah. someone like myself, or mm. maybe someone out there that clearly doesn't understand, and I think it's an understanding of the LBGT community. Yeah. What is the difference between a trans person or a transgender and a crossdresser? Mm. A crossdresser is okay. So transgender is they are all under the same umbrella. That is one. That is one fact. Many people misconstrue misconstrue mm -hmm. that. Um, if you are a trans, if you are in the transgender, um, under the transgender umbrella, it includes drag queens, includes crossdressers, includes transvestite. <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't been feeling well, so my voice is all gone. No problem. Um, so transvestite and crossdressers are also included, meaning. You are, um, so it, just imagine transgender is an umbrella. Then under that umbrella, we have transvestite, we have crossdresses, we have transsexuals. That is what I am. I'm a transsexual. Um, then there is uh, drag queens as well, or anyone who doesn't conform uh, to what uh, uh, patriarchy tells them. To do. For example, you have to be a woman dressed this way. If you're a man, dress that way. If you're a woman, don't cut your hair. If you're a woman, put on makeup oh or put on high heels. Yes, yeah, you're not, you're not deemed feminine enough, or you're not deemed uh, woman enough, female, feminine enough for you to be included in the in womanhood. So. Yeah, so um, anyone who doesn't conform, for example, gender non-conforming people, gender non-binary people, who just are people who don't feel comfortable in either of the genders, they're all under the transgender umbrella. Okay. So, yeah, so, uh, but transsexuals, on the other hand, take steps, medical steps, to correcting their dysphoria. Transsexuals have a thing called gender dysphoria. Cross-dressers, on the other hand, may not have that, not limited, but some may have it, but not all. Uh, majority of them don't have it because they could go back and revert back into living as men or women uh, and then live their lives. They're comfortable with who they are or if they're non-binary, they don't have to do surgery. Some non-binary people have surgery, some don't. So um, transsexuals are people who go ahead and correct what uh, biology has given them in the sense that, for example, you know, have your bottom surgery done or have your breast done, or if you're a man, you have your chest done and stuff like that. So, mm. <clears throat> okay, Miss Sahara, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna just say something because I know um, Barack Obama was a very popular president, um, mm. especially he was very popular amongst the LGBT Q community because he fought for the rights of the LGBTQ community to be seen as equal and yes. you know for all of that. Now, in the African community, some Africans they don't really 
care for Barack Obama because of that. Because, yes. again, because of religion and culture. How can yes. you say you're a Christian and then you, uh, you know, you are, you are, you are making it equal for gays and LGBT yes. people to yes. also, you know, have the same rights instead of him to kick against it. <clears throat> now, recently, we all knew about this um, Black Lives Matter protest. Yes where we were all protesting. And why were we protesting that? It's because of the brutality against black people. White people and black people are treated differently in America, in the UK, all over the world really, right? Okay. Now, whilst we were all fighting for the equality between the white and our black counterparts, right? Somewhere else, okay? Black LGBTQ community people, trans, gay, lesbian, they were also going through um, um, they were also going through, through the brutality from their own kind, okay? Mm -hmm. I remember that period, a few transgender women were killed. They were lynched by the same Black Lives Matter protesters, the same Black people <laughs> like them. What do you have to say about that? Do you not think that is very hypocritical? We're trying to fight for equality, but then we're saying, no, you can only be equal when it comes to skin color, but when mm -hmm. it comes to sexuality, no, 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 no. We don't want that equality. What do you have to say about that? So for many years, I've been campaigning against this. Now I've been, I've been trying to raise awareness. I'm glad you brought this subject up because it's something I'm very passionate about. If you go onto my YouTube page or yeah, when you see Trans that. Valley, do you see that I'm always talking about this? You know, uh, ethnic people, we use Abrahamic religion to, uh, to, to, to oppress our own people. We use a religion that was imported, no offense to any of you that is religious, but I feel like it's imported by white people in order to oppress our people, in order to steal our money, gold, oil, and all sorts of things, in order to control us, in order to enslave us. They, use, they came with the Bible to enslave our people, and our people have embraced this religion so much that they use it to demonize their own people. And it's ma it makes me so sad. Yes, many people say it's not the same thing anymore. It's, it's evolved. Yes, it's evolved into American evangelism mm. and Saudi Arabian Wahhabism when it comes to the two system of religions that we have in Nigeria. That's the reason why we have this whole, that subject is very broad. So I'm going to just like really go really wide so you can understand why I feel the way I feel and the reason why I left behind religion. Um, because, you know, in Nigeria, for example, I look back at the country that I left behind 17 years ago, and it's just a complete mess, and it breaks my heart to see family members being so against Muslims, family members who are Christians. When I remember very well on my grandmama's street, we had Muslims and Christians sharing food together when it's yes. Christmas. We, we mingled together. My auntie, my mom's elder sister, is a Muslim. She was married out to a Muslim man. We, we, we were okay. In those days when there was no radical religious beliefs coming imported into our countries, into our into Africa, we were able to exist with one another and respect each other because we all have the same blood. At the end of the day, we all have the same blood running yeah. in our veins. Yeah. We are all Nigerians. So and then evangelical Christianity came in and they are super, super against Obama, obviously. They're usually Republicans and they, are, <laughs> they hate and they hate all things LGBT. They see it as, uh, as uh, evil and possessed by evil spirit. Mm -hmm. And most of the pastors that from in Nigeria are all educated in America and they're all uh, sponsored by American evangelical schools. So their views are going to reflect the exact views that Trump has and the Republicans have. So why am I saying this? Okay, if you go to the mosque in Nigeria, it's filled up with radical views right. from Wahhabism, from Saudi Arabia. And then you go to our churches, which are all evangelical, Christ, uh, evangelical, evangelical Christians, it's filled up with American style of Christianity, which we never had before. When I, when I was in Nigeria in those days, we were inclusive of all. People forget one thing, one point is that you, me, all of us, LGBT people that live in Nigeria still pay tax. Under the Nigerian law and constitution, they are Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And they should be afforded the same right as any other person. Just because somebody sleeps with someone of the same sex or someone sleeps with someone who is a trans woman doesn't make them immoral and it doesn't make them inhumane because they still, at the end of the day, they still have the same blood. They still have the same human structure. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. not like they're animals. Mm -hmm. um, people often think that, oh, because you are um, 
because you're in the LGBT community, you can be a Christian or you can be this or you can be that. We can be anything. There are lots of good Christians that are gay and there are lots of good Christians. I have a pastor that is a friend, Jide, who is also Reverend Jide. I'm sure maybe some of you may have heard of him. Reverend Jide, Jide is a, is a, is a, is a, is a born again Christian and he's a gay man. So what? Yes, he sleeps with men. So what? <laughs> why, why should that diminish his, his persona or diminish his intelligence as a human being or diminish his right to exist as a human being. So it does make me sad. So yes, I agree with the, I, I agree with the hypocrisy of our people, especially black people in America and also black people around the world. When they hold the Bible so close to their heart and they still use the same Bible to bash their own people. They use the same Bible. Oh, you know, I am, I am, I am uh, the child of God and I love God, but you, I don't love you. Is that what Jesus mm -hmm. taught? Mm -hmm. No, Jesus taught inclusion. If Jesus was around today, he would be embracing trans people and gay people because he would see, he loves the underdogs and he loves people who are heavily discriminated against. The Bible that I read when I was growing up did not discriminate. That Bible was very inclusive. That Bible was not political. But now what we have is politics in, merged together with religion and using it to bash a few number of people because they're not a lot of us they're a very few of us lgbt people are the minority in the in mm. the audience so why yeah. is it that we are talked more of in media why is it that we open daily mail all they talk about is trans people why yeah. is it that when the media or the news or anything they're going on about it's all about either lgbt or gay or actually gay now is accepted gay now is cool to have a gay friend but trans people were the new boogeyman we are seen Ooh. as uh, evil and immoral, family rejection, the hate, mostly because of lack of education, you know, uh, of what it means to be trans. As uh, Nelson Mandela have said before, and I love that quote, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mm -hmm. And if you are to change the world, you need to teach people step by step. But how can you do that when Nigerian government is censoring uh, anything that has to do with LGBT people on Nigerian television, apparently mm. it's porn and apparently it's going to corrupt Nigerian society and their children. They say things like, uh, you know, multi-choice yeah. and DSTV is the biggest in Africa, uh, okay. satellite TV in Africa, and they hold the, con the most content that African people watch. Unfortunately, because of that, Nigeria is their biggest market and whatever nigeria says goes so what wow. you watch on multi-choice is what nigerians decide okay. and that is why i am kate which was a show by caitlin jenner mm -hmm. was never shown in nigerian te on nigerian television oh. multi-choice had to have it removed much to the chagrin of many south africans because they felt like it's not fair that the nigerians can influence that much power over what we watch because it, when multi-choice pulls it, it's also pulling it for South Africans. Oh, it's wow. South Africans who also have a lot of uh, laws and protection by Nelson Mandela, including both trans and LGBT people. When it comes to LGBT rights, South Africa is far, far ahead Nigeria. of, of Nigeria. Nigeria. So when Nigeria controls and wields that, so, that much power, it's not fair on the continental Africa because they make these decisions and it affects uh, the rest of Africa. Also, uh, um, Jazz, which is a story about a young yeah. trans child, was also pulled, claiming that it's a gay porn. <laughs> There's a porn movie. They don't want it here and their children don't want it here. I saw the article and I was so pissed off. I was like, this is the problem. You can't force a horse to a river. You can't force a horse to a river and force Force the horse to drink from that river. Drink. That horse has to be willing to wanting to drink from that river. So mm -hmm. how would you learn or how would you teach people about what it means to be LGBT community when the biggest medium in the world, which is television and the well, thank goodness for the internet. Internet is taking over. But the biggest medium in Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned for now, is television. And how can you uh, how can you change minds if you're not allowed or if you're not platformed on Nigerian television and if yeah. you're being censored by the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission? So, yeah, so uh, it does make me sad. And back to the killing of trans women. America, it's, it's very sad because I, make a I made a video. I said, all black lives will never matter until all black lives matter. Saying that uh, some black lives matter is not fair. 
saying that all blacks, some black lives matter, but if you're gay or you're trans or you're non-binary or intersex, you, you are not good enough to be in the black community. I find it very hypocritical and it makes me very sad because we live in a world that hates our skin color being black. You know, Nigerians don't get it as many Nigerians and Cameroonians and every other people who may not get it because they go like, oh, you live in the Western world, you should be grateful for what you have. Yes, they discriminate against you a little bit. Doesn't mean that it's anything. Hello? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we are all equal if there was a God, as so many people do believe, we're all equal according to the Bible in the eyes or under the eyes or the, under the gaze of God. Mm -hmm. So why do we, why do some people, some white people think that they are more um, important than black people? And this is why I have this cup. I always have my cup. <laughs> I saw her. I was like, yeah. she's a shady woman. <laughs> I, okay. I have to. I really, I really, you know, I really have to go. It's no joke. I am ready. I'm ready. Do you know? Do you know what question I want to ask? I'm just going back to what you said earlier, and you said, you know, God said we should love our neighbors and we should love each other. Mm. Um, so some people would argue that the same God and in the same Bible it was written that you know, thou shall not sleep with the same sex and things like that. So how do you, I'm sure you must have had that argument with a few people, right? Yeah. So how do you argue that with them? Then you have to read the whole Bible, literally, if you're going to pick and choose. It's like uh, when you go to Tesco's or Tesco's for shopping, shopping centers, center in the UK here or Sainsbury or something. It's the same when you're going to, you go to the sweet section and you pick a mix, mm. you pick and choose what you like from the Bible. And this is what is the problem with human beings. If you're going to pick and choose and say specifically and magnify that small, tiny section in the Bible. In the Bible, it never says anything about trans people, but still you people hate mm. us. So hello, <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell them. The Bible never mentioned a word about transgender. It just says a man should not wear a woman's clothing or something. That is Old Testament. And if we're going to follow the Bible so literally, yeah, then we will not be playing football because his footballs are made out of pig skin. There are so many things that the Bible says that many people do. Hey. It wasn't my mom or someone said, said to me that being a Christian is so hard that it's not easy because the rules that the Bible said 2,000 years ago, trust it's me guys, really 2,000 years ago, come on, we're in 2020 for goodness sake. You can apply the rules of, 20, of uh, 2,000 years ago to now because then it's completely different. Then you have internet, mm. we have internet now. There are so many things that they didn't know then. We have it now. They never talked about intersex people. I don't know if they did, but I think they may, may have. But from that, what I know, little that I know, because I switched off from the Bible when I moved to the UK, um, because it was conflicting. The belief system was conflicting with my belief as a human being mm -hmm. and a human being who is morally intelligent enough to know right from wrong. I'm not waiting for a rule book that was written 2,000 years ago to tell me how to live my life now. How can you apply those rules to now? And this is why it's so open to different interpret interpretation. And this is why we have the radical form of the religion. Mm. If the religion was very inclusive of all, trust me, I'll be in the church praising because I love church. My singing came from being in the choir growing up. So I would be in the church. I love Christian music. I love the ethos of or the words that Jesus preaches, which is of inclusion and of respect and of loving one another. Love thy neighbor as, your, as mm. thy, 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 thyself. Yeah. But unfortunately, we live in a world that everybody preach something else and do something else. Those same people who are judging gay people, they will still cheat, they will still lie, they will still siphon money from the government. They will, okay. still, go, they will still go and cheat on their wives and be doing stupid things. With gay so, people? Hello. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but when it comes to that, just want that one rule, they blame gay people because God says, don't lie with another man like you lie with your wife or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. Thank you for that, Miss Sarah. So, I'm going to yeah. take you back because I want this to be inclusive of not just okay. you now, Yes. as the well-known trans person that you are or trans woman that you are so i'm going to take you back a bit based on what you've told us yes. how did you come to know that you wanted to be a woman that is a question that um, i can put back to you how did you come across how when did you realize that you're a woman i would like I, you to answer that question first I think for me it's the society Society told you that you're a woman. No, no, yeah, I grew up and I'm dressed as a woman right from the onset. My mannerism, I think I'm just plotted along by parents. The body parts, the and body parts, like that. yeah, everything. That's all I know. Well, you have to also remember that your brain tells you what to do. 
In my case, it was my brain that tells me what to do. When I was growing up, my grandma gave me the freedom to be myself because my mom was in the university. So I didn't see myself any different from other girls. And this is why I had a problem with Chimamanda Adichie. When she said, trans women are trans women and women are women. I'm like, excuse me, you're one of those people putting fuel to fire, encouraging people who are transphobic to keep discriminating against trans people because they see us as different. Because at the end of the day, if I walk down the street now, I get men talking to me, they treat me the same way as they would treat another woman. Yeah. There's no difference. Mm. Uh, when I was growing up as a child, I never had those privileges of being a man. So for example, in your case, you talked about society told you you're a woman. That is nurturing, right? So when you make it that way, you make it sound like being is socially, you were socially nurtured to be a yeah. woman, which is great. But in my case, I was left the freedom for me to live. And this is the case of many LGBT people, actually gay men and many trans women whom uh, just remain how they are. For example, being feminine as they've always been. So, although for me, society beat it out of me. I have the scars on my body to show for it. They beat it out of me so many times, you know, disgrace me, make me feel ashamed of being feminine, uh, telling me to stop wearing tight trousers, telling me to go and play football. Don't cook in the kitchen with your grandmama. Don't stop doing this. Stop doing that. Don't, why are you having, I didn't have a doll baby. I had to make a doll baby myself because I wanted it so badly. All my friends, the girls all have it. And I didn't have it. You so, so growing up, I didn't see myself any different because I was very um, much like the other girls. I played and danced. There is a cultural trip in the village I come from where it's only girls that do it. The boys have their section, but I dance with the girls and I have my wrapper tied to my chest as I do the dance, like the other girls. So How old were you when you did this? This was, I was very young, maybe like six, five, when I became my innate sense of self. You know, when you, you realize your innate right. sense of self that, oh, I'm a human being and this is who I am. My innate sense of self have never said, Sahara, you're a boy. And you're a boy, act this way. I just never felt that way. I just felt like, why is everybody telling me, don't do this, don't do that. Play with that, play with this. I'm like, no, but that's not what I want because I want a baby doll. I want to, and I love teddy bears so much. Like I still sleep with teddy bears, you can see in my bed. I still have a lot of them. I love them so much. I wanted one and they won't give me, they will get you a gun or a truck. No, but come on. That is what I, that is who I am. And this brings me to now when families especially educated families are allowing their kids to explore the gender as they see fit. And many families find it, find it very um, troubling. And it's a big thing in the UK at the moment, around the world, for trans children not to be allowed to be themselves. They forget that there is no surgery involved. There is no sur I wish I had that opportunity when I was growing up, where I was allowed to explore my gender as, as, as I see fit. Yes, oh, you're a child, uh, you are too young uh, for you to know what you want. Excuse me, I knew who who I was since I was very little. They make it sound like being straight. You have to be 18 before you become straight. So you have to be 18 before you become gay or you have to be 18 before you become trans. I'm like, hello guys, come on. We've all known who we were when we were very, very little. I knew, I certainly knew who I was. And my grandmama let me be myself. She let me explore life uh, by myself. Uh, it was when I entered teenage years, that was when everything just went crazy because number one, the girls I used to play with, all of a sudden started growing breasts. Mm -hmm. And I was in, we noticed that they don't even have a penis. I'm like, what the hell? What is going on here? Yeah. You know, that is when the gender dysphoria kicked in and I tried to kill myself twice because I saw myself like, what the hell is wrong with me? There's something wrong with me. Why am I not like the other girls? And then society kept telling me that I was wrong. Um, come back home, people attack me, my family members attack me and tell me that it's wrong for me to be me. I should go and play with the boys and tell me that what you're doing is wrong. Stop wearing that, stop wearing this. And then when I go out of the house, I get beaten up and get bullied for trying to express myself as I see fit. For example, curling my hair, growing my nails or being as super feminine as I can. And it just makes me so sad to see Nigerians, or rather society, being that uh, super negative when it comes to uh, trans and LGBT issues. Do you know, just to come back with, to something you said, you said you already knew um, from when you were very, from when you were five, six, that this is who you are. Um, so, you know, because I believe in the UK or, or in some countries, they might say, no, you don't need to, you don't, a, a person doesn't really know until they're an adult, maybe they're 18 or in their um, late teens, 17. Now, people that have had um, gender reassignment, they've had the surgery, um, 
they we I've, I've seen stories where they later regret it and say oh i shouldn't have had that surgery so mm-hmm. would you would you say that person didn't really know who they were because that's a very you know that's a very mm-hmm. drastic change for you to now realize that actually i made a mistake i wanted to stay as a man yeah. or i want to stay as a woman <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, if you notice uh, Daily Mail and all the other right-wing media organizations, because you have to sometimes, whenever you're reading your newspapers, you have to be very careful, especially as black people. I always right. say to black people, don't read any newspaper that or any media organization that has anything to do with Rupert Murdoch or mm. any media organization that is anti-black, anti-LGBT people. As soon, let me tell you, they come for LGBT people first and then they go for black people. You, when black people support this media organization, they're encouraged by reading their content, you're encouraging them to continue making such content. So for example, this trans regret, regret stories started coming out in 2018 to now. And there are a few of them who are very popular, who have been around and they've rehashed their stories over and over again. They keep writing articles, the same articles over and over again, making it clear that being a trans person is regrettable. Well, people forget that those people who went through that process weren't trans in the first place. No one forced them to do that. No one imposed it on them to do that. We as trans people are strongly against anyone being forced to do something. For example, forcing your child to be something they are not. If, if I have a child and my child says, mom, I want to play with a doll and they are a boy. I'll say, yeah, of course, play with the doll. There's no, don't shame them. Don't tell them, oh, this is what a man should do. And this is what a woman should do. When you do that, you're encouraging and propping up patriarchy. And that's exactly what we're trying to dismantle. We need to, because same patriarchy is against black people. Same patriarchy is against black women with black features. When you have big ass, same patriarchy hates black women with broad shoulders. When I was in Nigeria, I have cisgender friends who have beard. I have cisgender friends who have hair on their chest. I have cisgender friends who have deep voice and they're all cisgender, they're not trans. Mm. So in that patriarchy and in that so-called femi- feminism that is called, we call it TERF, trans exclusionary radical feminist, feminism. Those TERF, like for example, JK Rowling and the rest, mm. with their views, they're also excluding black women from their style of, uh, of, of, of uh, feminism. Because what they're doing in essence is they're propping up an continue uh, celebrating what patriarchy has put in place. Meaning, oh, I'll accept the trans woman if she looks like Miss Sahara. Mm. I'll accept the trans woman if she doesn't have a deep voice. Mm. I'll accept the trans woman if she doesn't shave. You know, trans people make a lot of people uncomfortable. Like, same with LGBT people. We make a lot of people in our community uncomfortable. uncomfortable. So back to your question. Let me not go, I'm going broad out. But back to your, um, to, to your question. Whenever you, a, a, a person regrets it, it means they're not trans. Because if you were trans in the first place, you wouldn't even have think about <laughs> doing that. And the percentage of the people who regret these stories that you see in media that is heavily amplified, same with the feminists who always criticize trans people, they are just a tiny number of pocket of people. Mm. It's very rare for you to find all my friends, I have so many friends who are trans that I've met, I've never met a single person who regretted being trans. Why is it that whenever we hear these stories, it's usually published in either Breitbart or one life, lifesite.com or some website that is vehemently against trans people? So my answer to that question is, those people were not trans in the first place because if they were trans, then they are transgender because you're not, you, trans is not something that you just go in and come out and go like, oh, I, 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 I'm actually, I'm actually not trans. I'm regretting it. Yeah, you weren't trans in the first place. You should have met a psychotherapist for two years and make sure because usually you go to a psychotherapist for two years, yeah. they would rule you and you go in and out before you make the decision to go even as far as surgery. For you to go that far to have surgery, to chop your body up in order for you to be your true self. Come on. That is not, there's no mean feat. Mm. It's not easy. So, yeah. Oh, thank you for that, Miss Sarah. Yeah, I want to talk about transitioning. Yeah. You know, for anyone watching Sorry. this. I hope my voice is not echoing. Echoing no, back to you. Fine. Okay, no, of course. All right. So, I want to talk about transitioning because yes. one sees you and sees Caitlyn Jenner, and it's, it's, it's easy. They've got the community. You probably have the community, and you're going to shed light on it. But when I was in preparation for this um, episode, I did a couple of research mm-hmm. and someone said something that the trans community could be a lonely one. So what are the challenges that you faced during your transition? 
Yeah, for me, I don't use the word transition because when you say transition, it's almost as if you switched from one thing to the other mm. or you move from one thing to the, to the other. If, if we're using the transition in terms of general as a human being, we're all in transition. We all transition from ch childhood to adulthood. Yeah. We all transition from little girls to womanhood. Mm. So um, people often assume, oh, that, that is a man. Oh my God, that's a man. And this is a, she used to be a man, you know. You know, they make it sound like I, I, had, I was an adult when I was a, I was a male, you know, so it makes, <clears throat> for me, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. So I use the word journey. My journey into womanhood is not, um, for me, it's, it wasn't, it wasn't a walk in the park. First, I have to find a safe space for me to be myself because for so many years, I couldn't talk about it when I was in Nigeria because there was no one who would understand me. Mm. People just assumed I was gay because I was so feminine and girly and a gender bender, as they say it in those days. Mm. Um, so we don't have, I didn't have any precedents and I didn't have any example before me. I didn't see any trans person before me. So I had to be that person for myself. Mm. And coming to the United Kingdom was where I found myself for the first time because I got to meet meet trans women like myself. I got to meet incredible trans people like myself who were telling me, oh, I did this, I did that. I was oh, really, oh, wow, I really need to do this because this is why I truly am. Because I never even knew that I was trans because I didn't know the word for it when I was in Nigeria. Yeah. The only thing we saw was Jerry Springer. So I remember when I came out to my mom and told my mom that, listen, this is what I'm doing. I'm taking steps to becoming my true self. She said, why do you want to become a woman? You want to be like those people that come on um, mm. Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. And she was going on about how, you know, um, women are inferior to men. Why do you want to do that? And I totally agree with her because truly society is set up for men to be more superior mm -hmm. than women. So it, which made me very sad indeed, but I totally agree with her for her to think that way. But I said to myself, this is who I am and I'm going to put my foot down. It was difficult family rejection to friends rejection to a country rejection because Nigerians vehemently rejected me when I came out. Um, maybe now they might be open to younger trans girls, there, especially the ones that are coming out now. I'm seeing them doing crazy things and I'm like, wow, they are my heroes because I wish I had that much confidence when I was in Nigeria. But the truth is, People don't accept you. So if you're going to come out, you need to make sure you're very well equipped for it, emotionally and physically before you come out. And I will always say to young trans girls, please don't do it unless you know what you're giving up. One, you're giving up your anonymity. Two, once you come out, you lose a lot of jobs like I have done. Your financial status is gonna go down. Don't think that because risky person is so-called rich or claims to be rich, doesn't mean that all trans people are like that. How about the other young trans girls that are coming up? They all want to be like that. All want to be rich, want to have sugar daddy. I said, okay, if that's what you want, but my advice to you is to get your education and leave Nigeria. Because if you are a trans person in Nigeria, there is no way you would ever get your passport to say it's female. You'll never be in a society that respects you and give you a law that protects you. So yeah, so I had to leave. I had to leave Nigeria in order to find my true self and in order for me to, to see my calling as a human being. But my coming out wasn't planned. I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't think the Nigerians would even take me seriously in the sense that start writing about me and start saying things about me. I never knew that would happen. When I came out, I came out because a Nigerian pastor or bishop or something, famous bishop, said there are no LGBT people. There's no such thing in Nigeria. I was like, really? I'm going to show you. Oh, so I'm you came out in Nigeria while you were in Nigeria? No, no, no. I came out okay. in the UK. Okay. In the UK, in Thailand. I came out in Thailand when I was competing for Miss International Queen. Okay. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to out myself. And then there was a documentary. I was like, this is even the perfect way to do it. When it contacted me, I said, yes, of course. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So did the documentary. Then it came out. And when he published, I wasn't prepared for it. Like my anonymity in the sense that in the UK here, I walked down the street. I never had any issue with anyone. Nobody knew that I was a trans person. I blended mm -hmm. into society perfectly well. Wow. And even my mom said it too, that if you hadn't come out, your life would be so much different. I'm so much better. And I said, yes, I wow. totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, because since I came out, people start calling me names when I walked down the street, even in the UK here, they were calling me a geezer. Mm -hmm. um, to people calling me, telling, saying nasty things to me. Like when I, before, when I'm to date a man and we chat, we meet, and I tell them trans, they, they don't quite understand what it means and they're okay with it. Even if they Google it, they won't see anything about me. <laughs> now when I say anything, I'm trans, the first thing they do is to Google me. And they see all these hateful articles written about me. And they go, oh, it's a man, the man in a dress and stuff like that. The men automatically have the misconception that they are, if they sleep with me, it means they're sleeping with a man. 
So they forget that I have no testosterone whatsoever in my body at the moment. My body is as feminine as any other woman. If I don't tell you that I'm trans, you will never know. Mm, yeah. So it's, it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult for trans people. People think that, oh, when you have the surgery, your life will be better. But there's so many, uh, so many faces to it. So many faces that says to you that you're not valid, you're not woman enough, or you're too feminine, or you're too, um, you have too much controversies around you, or, oh, I can't give you a job because if you work in media, everybody will be looking at you because it's all about you. Mm -hmm. Or you will not be your friend because when we are, be, when we are your friends, you out us. Same with Nigeria. When I was in Nigeria, many gay men didn't hang out with me because I was too feminine. They felt that I'm too feminine and too girly. I right. will out, out them. Yeah. Like, and this is why I always say to people, when you look at LGBT people, don't assume that they had privileges of men. Mm. Because they don't have the privileges of cis men. For me, for example, I never had these privileges of cis men. The only privileges I got was privileges of being bullied and being beaten. <laughs> and privileges of being told off every time I try to do something that my brain, brain tells me to do. Oh. So yeah, um, it wasn't very, it wasn't very uh, easy for me. It was very difficult. So what part of Nigeria are you from? I don't like talking about it because I don't okay. encourage them anymore because they've all disowned me. Okay. And they feel, yeah, they feel like they are very, they don't want to have anything to do with me anymore because they've, they have their own national media press there and they've always talked about. So these days I don't talk about them anymore. I grew up in Abuja, most of okay. my life in Abuja. Okay. Uh, then I studied around, you know, like Kefi and Buari and all other parts of Nigeria where I studied. So I don't, I don't give them the I don't give them the uh, the acclamation anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you know? the publicity. Yeah, because we say that they all go like, oh, you know, one of us, you know. So I. Oh, okay. right. It's a shame. There's a loss for them, you know. Well, they don't see it that way. They are great. I think actually they're very happy. Mm. <laughs> if I come back. I mean, if I ever come back, I mean, I mean, I'll be in big trouble. So um, how old how old were you when you came to the UK? I was very young. I was a teenager. I was in my late teens when I came okay. to the UK. Um, and I think it was good for me because it did help me. Also, this is the other point I wanted to make when you talked about letting uh, young people, mm -hmm. if you, people who might regret it later on, because people assume that when you're young, you don't know what you want mm -hmm. and your brain is not developed enough to know who you are. For therefore, if you have, uh, if you become a trans person, you might regret it later on. Mm -hmm. So there's a thing about, there is no surgery. The media make people think that it's surgery, but there's none. There's a thing called puberty blockers, which they give to mm. young people. Okay. They give them when they become teenagers, because that is when our bodies start changing. The voice, <laughs> the voice drop. That is when the bone structures and everything start changing. Um, you know, so people forget that once a trans person don't do uh, go through puberty without puberty blockers and they finally become who they are in the future for example a trans woman mm. she will be rejected the same society that defines femininity and womanhood as someone mm. petite and someone pretty and someone passing that i hate using that word but someone who passes as a woman uh, are more respected for example i have my privileges as a passing trans woman uh, i get a lot of opportunities and i also have my privilege for being a light-skinned woman mm. uh, so there is the totem pole of levels of of uh, oh, privileges yeah. so, so my privilege is up so up there against other black trans women who are down there our trans women who take hormones but they haven't had surgeries or trans women who uh, can't afford or they don't have the financial privilege for them to take the steps to becoming their true selves mm -hmm. so when a child is left behind and not very well um allowed or somehow not allowed to take their puberty blockers then they develop those features that people mm -hmm. always get angry yeah. about yeah. oh you look like a man oh you look like a man in dress yeah because you stop them from taking puberty blockers you know puberty blockers do nothing to your body all it does is just post your puberty for until you are 19 and you become of legal age then you decide what you want to do with your body yeah. so well, my question is and i just want to be objective here is yeah. that it's not as if you're seeking acceptance from anyone, yeah. but you want everybody to have a clear understanding of the trans community. But if we narrow it in, there seems to be members within the LBGT community that have issues with trans people. Yep. Why is that? Because you're, with the lack of better word, and, and, and mm. stop me here if you think I'm using the wrong word, you're not seeking validation, but you want us to accept you. But the people that are supposed to be champions of your rights are against you. How do you then... You, you need to fix that before you can fix the bigger community. Yeah. 
I know. And they're saying that, you know, when you pick one broom, it's easy to break. When you pick a bunch of broom and you try to break it, it's impossible. You're stronger in higher number mm. and your voices get even higher. And this is why trans is included in the LGBT community. If not, we would gladly go on it on our own. Mm. But it's not advisable because trans women were the first people who threw the stones in the Stonewall riots. It was trans people who were in the forefront of against police brutality for many, many years in New York and also in Compton and in uh, Compton's and also in the UK here. Trans people are always in the forefront of any social justice movement. And it's a shame that the people who we fight for are the same people who are against us. If you notice, gay people have advanced a lot. Gay people, yeah. you, know, you can attend gay marriages, you know, you can have a gay friend and it's no big deal. You go to workplace, they have the gay men there as a talk, not talking, but they are, they are now part of the system. When they put a trans person there, they put us in as a token. We are used as a token. And so many gay people do not understand why we are trans. And it's totally understandable because gay people are cisgender. They're not transgender. So only trans people understand, or people who have yeah. had experience with trans people before. Most gay men hasn't met, many gay men have not met trans women before. Some gay men think, oh, well, you know, you, you should be a joke. Why don't you just be a drag queen? Just cross dress. You know, you dress sometimes and then you dress as a man sometimes. That is acceptable. But for you to take steps, medical steps for you to be your true self is seen as a taboo. I think it's also lack of education as well, like I was saying before. So if our own people cannot accept us, how can the public accept us? Mm -hmm. You know, this is why it's very important. Yeah. Now, like I always reach out to gay men and I always say to them, listen, you know, come to me, ask me questions. I will gladly answer you. And if, you ask me questions, if you ask me questions that are inappropriate, I would gladly use it as a teachable moment to mm -hmm. tell you that what you're doing is wrong. Don't say that, say it this way or say it that way. You know, and also being trans as well, there are lots of things that discourages people from understanding it. For example, pronouns and stuff like that. But it takes a lot of patience and it takes mm -hmm. a lot of seeing it as a form or a sign of giving human or rather a simple human decency for you to respect people as they want as they've chosen for you to how they, they've chosen for you to treat them so yeah so um yeah we have we have a huge issue that uh, gay men and so many uh, lgbt people don't agree with us even gay women especially the turfs the one we call turf uh, the ones who are lesbians and feel that trans women are taking up spaces female only spaces and i also see oh, okay. They only see they also see it as oh perhaps we trans men are molested as they see trans men as molested as women that's why they became men and trans women are just men in dresses because they're perverts and they just because they want to go into female only spaces to rape young girls so it's they have whoa that, yeah that is the view that's the view and that is what J.K. Rowling is supporting and this is why it discourages a lot of trans people because her books are fantasy and encourages individuality and encourages people to be different and unique and then she comes out with the tough ideology uh, oh we're trying to save women from sexual assault then they forget that if we're going to play the victim olympics trans people will win because what well, we're rejected by family society has rejected us we're constantly being murdered and we're constantly being raped you know because <laughs> if you see the number of rape and when shelters like Salvation Army or the other shelters are rejecting trans people, there are lots of trans, trans people go to these places in order to find refuge. Wow. Not because they want to go and rape any woman, <laughs> just because they just want mm -hmm. to go to the toilet to pee. Yeah. We've been doing that for years. Trust me, we've been doing it for years before Daily Mail caught up with it. When I first came to London, I've always used female toilet, ever. And we never had any issue. So why is it an issue now? Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, so we, we, it's a broad thing, it's a broad element. And I, for me, my belief is that the American evangelical Christianity, who are mostly Republicans, are using, because they've turned into politics, it's, it is politics, I say polit political, and this is why they don't like Barack Obama, because he's a Democrat, he has an Islamic name, and he's a black man. So they hate that. And in America, if you only have the tiniest of black blood, even if you have like a tiny, tiny, tiny pin, a drum, <laughs> you are black. So mm. it doesn't matter if you're mistress or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. We, we, have this, we have this whole ideology that, oh, um, okay, so therefore we're going to use a thing called divide and conquer. They use, you know, the story, you know, the, um, you know, the, the Trojan horse story. Yeah. Um, Helen of, 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 of Troy. Uh, Troy. And how, you know, they use your own people against you. And that's what they're doing with the gay people, especially gay women. 
uh, they sponsor them, bring them to Congress, bring them to America, they fund their organization. There's a new organization out that came out two years ago called LGB Organization, where they are fighting to remove the T from the LGBT. Um, and there are lots of trans women that are in there as well. These trans women see themselves as men in dresses. They say, oh, I'm a man, I'm a man in a dress, because I've lived as a man. Yes, you've lived as a man, you've had children. So your, ex your lived experience with yeah. a woman, lived with a woman, and had children lived as a man, and had a white collar job, and lived as a white man, just like Caitlyn Jenner lived as a... This is why I always say to people, please, don't use Caitlyn Jenner as an example as a trans woman. Just like I would say to people, don't use Risky as an example as a trans person, because all our lived experiences are completely different. Uh -huh. Everybody have different lived experiences. This is why, yes, we're under umbre the same umbrella, but we're all completely different how we became, uh, became women. Just like all cis women, as a black woman, your lived experience is completely different from a white woman or a Latino woman or an Asian woman. Your lived experience is completely different. There should not be a homogeneous way of saying, oh, there's only one way of becoming a woman. There are different paths that makes us, that brings us all together as one unit. So yeah, so um, this, uh, this uh, so for me personally, I, I believe that these political groups hate LGBT people. They can attack gay men anymore because it's not fashionable anymore. So what do you do? Use gay women mm. to give them, tell them that bo boogeyman analogy and encourage them to use it over and over again in media. Give them a lot of media attention and media press because when you do that, it outreaches the public and the public will keep commenting on the post. If you notice the post on uh, Daily Mail, whenever they write an article about Daily Mail that causes anger or outrage, to the media and, and the press. You see, they have thousands of comments. That is because it encourages people. I study digital, digital media, I have a master's in digital media, and it's, it's what we do. We create new content that encourage people to like, share, and leave comment. By doing so, you get more advertisers to come in mm -hmm. because it shows that you have traffic coming into yeah. your page. Mm -hmm. So they do this, this, they do this in order to encourage more people to come and then they will continue making this content because people, it riles people up and it makes people yeah. angry and it makes people react. So okay. Yes, yeah. Thank you for that. I'm gonna just go, let's go into dating, right? I don't, yeah? Yes. Now, would, would you say a trans woman, I mean, pardon my ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. Can a trans woman be attracted to another woman or would they normally be attracted to a man? Yeah, <laughs> majority of trans women that you see in media are attracted to other women. Okay. For example, yeah. Caitlyn Jenner. Because yeah. she lived as she lived, she was she lived as a woman who, as a person who was with another woman. So her attraction would always be a woman. You see, this the people always confuse gender and sexuality together. Yeah. They are not synonymous. Uh, um, gender is who you go to bed as. Mm. Sexuality is who you go you to go bed to with. with. Okay. Yeah. So, so who you sleep as is me. When I wake up, this is who I am. And who you go to bed with and have sex with is sexuality. So gender and sexuality are two different things. And this is why there is always a conflict between when we say LGBT people, the reason why we are all clamped together is because mm. we are fighting for the same equality and the same ethos. And that is the reason why they put us together. So. Sexuality is one, one, one thing that is just beyond that. And then gender. A trans person can be bisexual. A trans person can be gay. This is why whenever you have... Uh, so this is the other concept. When people assume that, oh, trans people shouldn't be in the LGBT community. And I say, but hello, trans people can be gay too. So trans people can be a lesbian. Mm. So they call themselves trans I don't know if uh, trans people find it offensive, but some people call them trans beings. But um, there yes. are trans people who are lesbians and there are trans people, heteros I'm a heterosexual, I like men. So, um, and then when a, 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 a straight guy find me attractive, because they ask the question, uh, so am I gay for finding you attractive? I'm like, hello. I'm a woman. You, uh, then you're not, <laughs> if you're asking me that question, then perhaps you're looking at me as a man. Mm. You don't see me as a woman because if you look at me, why would you even ask me that kind of question? Okay. It means you're not secure in your sexuality. And this is where the problem is. Most men are not secured in their sexuality. So they find it very uncomfortable to be with a trans person. Okay. So, the what truth is, so what you're saying is, sorry, Ms. Sahara, yeah. a trans person can be gay, lesbian, bi, or straight. Yes. Right. Okay. And asexual as well. And asexual. And right. asexual. So sexual, because sexuality is a different thing. Anyone can be any of those things. 
So for transgender is also a human being, like cisgender people. Mm. So cisgender people can have all the sexuality. For example, you're a cis person, you can be, six people are gay. Cis people are straight, cis people are bisexual, and cis people can be asexual. Cis people can be trans, sorry, can be, uh, cis people can be uh, lesbians. So trans people as well, just like six people can be gay, straight, bi, and asexual. So would you only refer to someone as transsexual when they've undergone the Maybe gender reassignment? No, you don't have to go through gender reassignment because gender reassignment surgery is the bottom surgery. It means that you, you, you've had the bottom equipment uh, yeah. done yeah. like any other woman. Uh, and to, be, the, to, to say the truth, if you look at it aesthetically, it doesn't look any different like any other woman because if you see it, it just looks like any other woman. Yeah. Um, but the truth is not all trans people have had that surgery and not all trans people want to have that surgery. So, and not all trans people are comfortable having that conversation. So if all trans, so um, what I want to understand is, so if, for example, you see a trans woman, she's, you know, she has boobs and you, okay, you, you would just think she's a woman, but then when she tells you she's a man, right? When she tells you she's trans, sorry. And, um, you know, and she's attracted to men. But then if they haven't undergone the, the gender reassignment for their um, private areas, so how, what would you call that then? Okay, so this is the, this is the problem. Uh, when attraction is based mm -hmm. on identity, attraction mm. is not based on body parts. People always assume that sexuality is based on body parts. Sexuality is not based on body parts. For example, straight men, like I watch one of your conversation that you guys have, and I wish I was on that panel. You guys don't worry, asking, you're coming back. <laughs> yeah. You're asking, you were asking, and I was like, oh, girls, please don't ever do that. Whenever you're having a conversation, bring people who are experienced or people who know a thing or two about mm. that subject. You were talking about a man who likes his anus being played with. Or Peggy. Sex. Uh -huh. <laughs> Does he, um, is the man gay? gay. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. He's not gay because his mm -hmm. attraction is to the person. For example, if a man says I'm attracted to men and I'm attracted to women, then he's bisexual. When a man says, "Oh, I'm attracted to trans women and I'm attracted to cis women," I would say you are straight because trans women are women. Are women. So therefore, if you're attracted to a woman because she identifies as a woman then you are straight. If she identifies as a man and you think that you're attracted to a man, then you are gay. But so, you know what? People would argue that they cannot see a trans woman as a woman, except she now has female reproductive organs like the breast and the vagina. Is that problem. right? The word that you even used, that, that word that you just, that sentence you just made there about female reproductive organs. Yeah. You make it sound like women are made to have babies. Yeah. And this is, this is the problem. This is still a patriarchal way of speaking because we talk about feminism and inclusion of all women. Mm. And then we reduce women's bodies to carrying babies and fertility and how fertile you are. Because if you are a woman, you are used as childbearing, like you do in the royal family. When they bring you in, you pop up babies and pop up heirs for them. Your essence as who you are, for example, what they're doing to Megan and not allowing Megan to speak, where, yes, you are seen, where you are seen and not heard, where you're not given a platform for you to speak, is exactly what we're fighting against. Mm -hmm. So when you say to a woman, oh, if you, don't, if you can't bear children, you're not a woman. Like we have it in Nigeria today. Where if you don't give birth to a boy child, you're not seen as a woman. If you only give birth to girls, girl children are not seen as deserving of education, yeah. of equality, of great jobs. Female women still have a long way, because my mom is a boss in her work and it's, she struggled for years. They rejected her for so many years for her to get up there. Yeah. And this is, the, this is the problem that we have in society because of lack of also education and also because of patriarchy is so steep into our culture and into our lifestyle that we assume that women who can bear children are the only women. Women who have a mm -hmm. certain type of organ are women. Women, we say, when we start dissecting it that way, it means that women with MHKR, Maya Rutikansky, Kausta Hauser syndrome are not women. It means that we're saying that those women are, because what it means is women who were born without womb. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that all cis women were born with womb? I used to say, mm -hmm. how about intersex women? How about intersex women who were born with both genitals? Where are you going to place them? Are you going to say, oh, yeah. are you gonna say, oh 
Maybe they're not women enough. Mm. Or maybe they're not men enough. <laughs> they're not men enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. So for me, example, for me, my one has to do with my brain. So yes, physicality is, it has essence of who you are comes from innate sense of self, from cerebral, from your cerebral cortex, from your brain. Your brain tells you who you are. When I wake up in the morning, my brain tells me, okay, put on your bra or put on this or do that, do this, mm. do that. That's what my brain is telling me to do. I don't, it's not because society tells me, yes, it's, the society may have a way because I enjoy beauty pageant, I like being feminine, uh, big boobs, I have yeah. vagina, I have everything I, I, like any other woman. Mm. But it doesn't mean that it's not, be, I didn't do it because I, society tells me, I did it because that is how that I is see real. myself. Mm -hmm. And that is how I feel. Although women, uh, many of those turf and lesbians always say, being a woman is not about feelings. <laughs> being a woman is not how you feel. But I would say that it goes beyond that. Yes, feeling is included, but it also goes beyond that because your essence and your innate sense of self and your purpose as a human being comes beyond body parts. Mm -hmm. And that is why when a man says he's attracted to a woman that has a penis or a cisgender man, straight man, says he likes to play with a dildo, it's just sexual art. That doesn't define his sexuality. Yeah, yeah. Just because he, he wants to suck a dick or take a dick, sorry for mm -hmm. being rogo, but doesn't make him... <laughs> It doesn't make him so, less of a straight man. It doesn't make him less of a man because he likes bending over. That's you know what, point. Miss Sahara, I'm very glad that you've, you're straightened that out because we, what we try to do, we try to ask the questions that our viewers might be pondering and yes. might be thinking. <laughs> so what I'm understanding is a trans woman can be a trans woman regardless of whether she's had this gender, um, you know, whatever. So it, that's, that's a clear message out there so people know because I, for one, I've got that clarity now. Right? Yes. And example, I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. I'll give and an I'm example. Glad you, I'll give an yeah, example. Sorry for cutting you off, but I'll give an example with Risky. Yeah. I mm. keep on having argument with my friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. I, you know, I know I haven't been feeling well. So my voice is right. today of all days. No. I don't know why I'm not feeling <laughs> well. I'll give an example uh, with Risky because many people often misgendered her. I used right from the beginning when she came out and she was on that video where she was going on about, I'm not gay. Me, I'm not gay. Mm. I don't have, to have children, no. But I want to have children, no. I said to my friends, listen, this one is trans, okay? They just don't know it yet. And they're going to regret seeing this thing. Just give them 10 years. They'll regret, they'll look back at that video and cringe. And I was saying to my friends, for me, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to continue using she for her. Mm -hmm. Because if I can use she for drag queens, why not she for risky? Uh -huh, yeah. So my friends only say, you, you, and then my friends say, oh, actually, it's, it's, it's true. Because most of us here, when you watch RuPaul Drag Race, when you're talking, yeah. everybody, all these black people, who always talk against trans people? They watch RuPaul Drag Race and they enjoy do. it. Oh, look at their makeup. I they do. look like drag queens. Yeah. You see, black women, they're all looking like cross dresses with their mm. heavy makeup. So I'm like, hello. So there is a culture there and they are embedded in culture thanks to RuPaul Drag Race. And there are trans people thanks to Pose now that are also coming out. Yeah. And I believe that uh, Risky is the product of her environment just because she is in Nigeria and she has to protect herself when it mm. comes to. Uh, she can't just come out and declare it. Yeah. Her innate, her innate sense of self may tell her that she is a woman. And she talks herself in the female sense. And that's the way she portrays herself. So therefore, call her a woman out of respect. Okay. So she may say she's not trans, but just call her, call her a woman. Right. Sorry, Yuri, before, Yuri, before oh, you yeah. come, did you see the, the live video she did on Instagram a few days ago with Dele Momodu? Bob Ritsky openly said she's not gay, she's not trans, she said she's just a cross-dresser because she wanted to do something different. She, she looked and thought, what will bring me money? And she realized that dressing the way she did will bring her publicity. And, and, you know, luckily for her, it's now also brought her money. So she says she has girlfriends, even though she comes on social media and says, I have a she boyfriend a that gives me mm -hmm. money. So it's there fine. That is the yeah. point I'm trying to make to you. That mm. Risky is the product of our environment. Environment, yeah. Okay. Is a product of a transphobic, homophobic mm. society yeah. that have said you are not welcome here. There is no law to protect you. Mm. So Risky is being clever by not claiming or saying or, or declaring that she is who she is. Do you think she's undermining the trans community, though? Yes, she mm -hmm. is because uh, that is the other part that my trans sisters from Nigeria whom perhaps not out, many of you mm. may not know them, are very angry with because they feel like 
that it, actually it was also my fault because I did give her that void to fill up because I refused to give Nigerian television interviews because I felt that the hostility and the hate that were channeled towards me made me feel that I don't want to talk to them mm. unless I know for sure and I vet them very well first. Mm. The older I've become now and the more experienced I've become, I've learned that I shouldn't have done that because maybe mm. if, I had, if I had remained vocal and continue educating, perhaps it might penetrate true to someone. Yeah. And that was a mistake I made. So risky is the product of her environment. Risky is saying these things because it's the only way she has to protect herself against the 14 years imprisonment. Come on, guys. There is a law against it. Yeah. There is a law against a man sleeping with a man. Of course she's going to yeah. say she's not sleeping with a man on, on, on thing, on the, in the interview. She's never going to say, show I'm trans and declare I'm trans. She said she's the first trans. She said that before. She, so she keeps giving missed messages. Missed messages, yeah. <laughs> I keep playing with people's mind. Keep mind. Relevant. We and don't know anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, to me, she's a trans woman and I'll always address her as a she because I, I believe that she is. She's just in a wrong situation where she just doesn't know what to do yet. That's so, okay. yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. I'm just going to ask you one final question and then we can wrap you up because you've gone in depth with this and I'm happy. And let me know, you are coming back because obviously, you yeah. you need me brilliant. To We've got this like she's coming <laughs> back. Hey, so, you need me to <laughs> my final question, so to say, is that yeah. obviously you said something earlier on. If you had not come out in 2014, because that was how I found out about you in 2014. If you hadn't come out, life would have been a lot better. But now this is 2020. Everyone should accept everyone for whoever they want to yeah. be. So what do you say to people that say, I don't have a problem with how you choose to live. I don't have a problem with your sexuality. But whatever you do, don't bring it to my face. Because we've got instances where Kevin Hart has said, well, he doesn't have an issue with gay people, but if his son turns out to be gay, he will kill him or beat the F out of him. Yeah. So, and this is someone that has a huge platform mm. that can bring education to the plight or the struggles of people within the LBGTQ and T. So my question in closing is, everyone is happy for you to live the way you are. You probably have friends, you are a woman, but don't bring it to me. As long as you do you in your little closet, I'm okay. What do you say, sir? Uh, the people often say, that they, I think it's a misconception that we're doing it to shove it in people's faces. Okay, so if you don't know about me, like if you are my friend and you know me, you want to, you will not have an issue with gay people or trans people because you are my friend. You've met a trans person and you look at me, you go like, oh, she's normal like every other people. Oh, there's nothing special about it. It's no big deal. Uh, okay, so why would you say that you don't want a human being to express themselves and live their life fully and openly as the people that as they say they are because you feel uncomfortable with it? Why are you saying don't shove it in my face? It's because you're uncomfortable. Just say it. Mm. Just say it. You're transphobic and you're homophobic. Just say it. Kevin Hart is homophobic. That's the reason why he said that. If he wasn't homophobic, he would open his arms and open his doors and open everything for his child if the child comes out as gay. Because it's your child. Love should be unconditional. It shouldn't be conditional. You can't say, oh, you have to be straight. And you have to be this or you have to be that for me to love you uh, because you're my child. Once you do that, it shows that you're not genuine. It's like when people say to me, oh, I can't be friends with trans people, but in my dating profile, I put, if you can't be, if you don't see trans women as women, don't contact me. And mm -hmm. I get a lot of people. So why should I accept trans people before I should date you? W what is the meaning of that? Why should you? Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> like, because they don't know that I'm trans. Because I didn't say that I'm trans. I just yeah. put, it there, put it on there. And it will now show when they start acting and behaving that way. I know immediately this person is just not my type. Mm. So when they behave that way, I just go like, well, hello, if you don't have, oh, I don't have an issue with trans people. Oh, but just stop saying, it's like, why is white people saying, I'm not racist, but black people kill more black people. Oh, yeah. oh I'm not racist, but, you know, they always put the but, but. there. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So, you know, don't shove it in my face. You know, I, do you, do you live your life, but don't shove it. That is because you have a biased view about LGBT people. If you're truly as open-minded as you claim that you are, then why not give them a chance, get to know them? It's not a big deal. Oh yes, you're gay. Oh, that's cool. What can you tell me more about it? Oh, if you're curious, you want to know more, you can ask questions. Oh, if you don't want to ask, it's fine. Mm. If you don't want to know, it's fine. But when you start behaving like, oh, do you stay away from me? Don't come near me. There's something wrong with you. Just because they say they are gay doesn't mean they want to sleep with you. Trust mm. me, gay people have standard. They know what they're <laughs> and people. 
So some of these men, they go on about how, oh, you're trans. I don't want you. I'm like, excuse me, you're not even my type. Just keep it moving. You're mm. talking as if I don't have a type. I don't have mm. a taste. Why would I even date you? Just look at the state of you. You're standing there chatting rubbish and telling me, oh, don't do this. Don't talk to me or don't do this. Who even, did I ask you to be, come to my life? I didn't ask you. Just keep it moving. People who are truly my friends and people who really, really, really want to know me are very much welcome to be around me. If you don't want to yeah. be around me, keep it moving. Yeah. Okay. But by doing so, it shows very clearly that you are transphobic because I'm not saying that because you're not my friend, you're transphobic. I'm just saying yeah. that if you have an issue with me existing as a human being, then yeah. you should search, you should think for yourself. Just think and search yourself. It means there's something wrong somewhere. Either you are closeted or maybe you find it so much so attractive that you feel so guilty that because you feel, like you don't want to be around me. Because they're bringing, you're bring, them seeing you is bringing out that thing in them that they're trying yeah. to hide. <laughs> if you're truly secure in your sexuality, you won't have an yeah. issue with it. Because if you're truly secure in who you say you are or who you say you are, especially in se your sexuality, why can't mm -hmm. you have a gay man friend? Mm. Why can't you be friends with a gay man? If you're secure in your sexuality and you know you're not gay, you like women, you can have a gay friend. Why is that a big deal? I don't mm. get, I, that's the part I don't get. Once you start acting really angry, they say the, the, uh, the biggest, uh, the, uh, the empty barrel makes the loudest, make the loudest noise. noise. So you make that loud noise because or rather the other saying is it, the, the lady dots protest too much. When you're protesting too much and going, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to be around gay people because they are gay and they're going to make me gay. Or I said, it's mm. easy. <laughs> if you're not gay, keep it moving. Why do you get involved with people if, you mm. don't, if you're not gay? Then it should not be a big deal. If you're yeah. secure in who you say you are and your sexuality. You know, the way you've advocated for Kevin Hart's son without him being your son mm -hmm. takes me to quickly ask you one more yes, question. Son. Yes, mm. Are you Are you going to have a child? Have you thought about family? Yes, I've thought about it. I want to have two kids. I'm not interested in getting married because I, that one, you, you, when you're planning it, you depending on somebody else. You are okay. depending on the man to ask you, to marry them you're asking because i'm straight you're depending on so it has to do with someone else's decision or making babies i don't really need another man to do that i want to i want to have two kids i want to have children i love 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 kids because i think i think i'll be a very great mom according to what yeah. people have said anyway and my mom is equally ready she's retiring and she wants to come and stay in the uk here so i will have the chance to have to have free nanny so when she comes. So let me push the barrel a bit. Would this be by surrogacy or are you thinking of adopting? I was thinking about surrogacy and I'll use friend sperm to do it. Uh, or I would either surrogacy or I would, uh, or adoption. It would have to be between the two. Okay. But I would prefer surrogacy so that it's my decision and my, my choice. But I'm a bit torn because, you know, you think about uh, there are lots of kids out there that need mothering and need someone to love them. Uh, when I think about it, I'm like, okay, maybe I should, I should go ad, go to uh, um, adopting. Okay. But we'll see. As in, I, I haven't got, gotten any plans. So I'll see how it goes. I've kept it open because I feel that we are, um, I have too much, for me, I feel that I have too much love to give. And I really, 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 really would love to have kids. I love children so much. <laughs> yeah, I can see that because yeah. in, in our journey following you, you you're very maternal. Yeah. But without the lack of better words, this love wasn't go to waste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it started like it started like ten years ago when I started beginning to feel like, oh, I want to be a mom so badly. Like I really, really wanted to be a mom, and I kept looking out for it. Even when I was in the Philippines, I wanted to go and research some um, some adoption uh, places, but they were like people were warning me that I should be careful because I could get charged for kidnapping, mm. and also being a trans person and a single person. It makes things even more difficult. Mm. So uh, I'm still considering it. I've spoken to, I've even, I haven't gone as far as three months into waiting uh, to get to ha ha go through the adoption. Uh, spoke to them, went for uh, conversation and counselling about it. But in the end, I didn't didn't decide to do it because my my build, my flat is not big enough. I only live in a one bedroom flat, so okay. I need an extra space or something for them to approve it. And this is why maybe I might go through the surrogacy. Okay. Just before we round up, yeah. there is this saying, or it's not a saying, but people are saying that trans women have more advantage when it comes to sports. Is this true? It's not true. Uh, and it has been debunked so many times. 
you know, there's a cis, cis ample or what, like, for example, if I'm to go with a girl, uh, cisgender woman right now, uh, because I've been post-op for nearly 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, which I haven't produced testosterone. And this is the reason why I have to keep taking estrogen or else I'll have osteoporosis, which is the bone marrow disease. Yeah. People yeah. often forget that when you're already post-op, you are weaker than a cis woman because cis women have a tiny dose of testosterone in them. Yeah. I don't have no testosterone whatsoever. In fact, I was just saying, I was going to post it on my page, Facebook profile, personal profile, to asking all my trans brothers, please tell me where you get your testosterone from. I need some testosterone. I'm too feminine. My body mm. is just too, too feminine, too soft. I'm not used to that. So for people to have that misconception, within two years, when you start taking hormones, your strength will just diminish instantly. Yeah. I'm not saying that uh, someone who is very built, like a bodybuilder, but there are mm. lots of cis women. Let, let me tell you, competitive sports has never been fair. Let's face it. <laughs> but competitive sports have never, ever been genetically fair because there are some people, the people who do better. For example, uh, Michael Phelps, his wingspan is how many inches long? He's very right. wide. He's wider than the, his, his, uh, the other people that he's competing with. Mm. So uh, they're only using trans women as this. They're using the sport thing to promote the turf ideology mm. um once you're on hormones for at least two years i can assure you that your testosterone level is not as high as a cisgender person and even more so when you're post-op if your post-op is even worse because you're struggling to do things that a cis woman can do easily mm. so, so yeah so i i just i totally disagree with that i think it's all okay. misconception and they've right. made it even more difficult. The IO, IOC or IO yeah. something C has made it, even Olympic Committee, Committee has made it even more difficult for trans women. And still, people are not happy about it. Okay, let's face it. Have <laughs> you noticed that in Olympic, how many trans people have you had in Olympics? None. I think none. I don't none. think we have any, none. None. There is no trans, there is, I cannot remember any single instance where we have an Olympic game going where there is a trans person. None. So people I, I think that question came up with Semina Casta. Yeah. yeah, that was she's where it is. But she's not trans. She's not trans. She's oh. not trans. She is intersex. Yeah. She's so this, not is trans. A, this, is a, this is the point. This is the she's problem. intersex. Yeah. Yes. When you have gender anomaly and then people, or rather, uh, gender ambiguity, like she does have, and she identifies as a female, so she's a woman. Just because she produces more testosterone than other cis women doesn't make her more less of a woman. Mr. Not... Hara, can you explain what that intersex is for our viewers? What, what, just in layman terms. Yes, intersex is when you are either born with both genital organs or both reproductive organs. It can be seen sometimes and sometimes it cannot be seen. Oh. Uh, I watched a video of an intersex child being molested in Nigeria. Um, on, on Twitter, this was like 10 years ago. I, mm. I recorded it because I wanted to keep it for my, because I'm, I'm trying to make a film about the hate that trans and LGBTIQ people face in Nigeria. Yeah. This intersex person was having sex with another boy and they stripped them naked and they were beating them up. You could see they were all bloodied. And then they said, open your legs, open your legs. And they have like sticks. And then they open the legs. You know how you, you perch and poke a snake Mm. That's what they were doing. Then mm. they raised the intersex person's balls up to see if, to see the vagina. Oh my God, he has vagina. Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And they started preaching and praying on the person. Wow. And it made me really sad because I was like, oh, it's lack of education because this can happen. It happens in all species. It can happen. You know, there are some people who were born with the same reproductive organs. Some people is in their womb. They, don't have, mm. they haven't got a womb, but they have produced testosterone. There are some women who are legally declared as, as males because they don't have a vagina mm. or because they have both or because it happens in the womb. And this is, this is the problem. Many people are, don't quite grasp the concept of biology and how broad biology are. Biology is not as clear cut as we try to explain it as chromosomes and mm. this over 26 chromosomes but we'll, we just narrow them down to the two and assume that everybody that's it x and y there are so many variables <laughs> science um, students you know what if we say we continue we won't finish today yeah, i know yeah, yeah. miss sarah I'm you've been very thorough and this is why we've asked you to come on because if there's anyone that was going to talk yeah. about this it had to be you mm -hmm. so guys i'm sure 
look at her. She's just a bundle of knowledge. And trust me, this is not the last time you will see her on the set of okay, Trash It. Miss um, Sarah, thank you so much. Your wealth of knowledge. Because when Celia and I thought about this, this, this topic, we're like, you have to be you. It can't be any other person. Because obviously, this is a lived experience. And you, mm -hmm. you come with so much knowledge beyond what Celia and I know. So, And I'm sure there's still more topics that you will be coming to yeah. Trash It. So, cool. And we are on radio now. So every Wednesday at 7 p.m., Myself and Celia, who some of the panelists are on Waiting Day Radio every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So please join in. Waiting Day Radio is a 24 hours online radio station that streams across the world. So, Miss Harari, when you're in the Philippines, you better be logging in and listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so, and when this premieres on Saturday, Miss Harari will also be with us on YouTube when we go live. Eventually, there's any question myself and Celia have left her, and you're yearning to ask her, or people that are actually, as Miss Sarah says, not transitioning but rejoining. Or did mm. you say joining or rejoining? Joining. Joining. joining, and you're in your joining process. Journey, like, journey, like a journey. Oh, okay. oh journey. journey. Oh, I journey. see. Okay, a journey, journey process. Okay, yeah. a journey process. And uh, Miss Sarah is, it's, it's, she's, she's a wealth of knowledge that you can actually learn from. So until next week. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. And thank to my so beautiful much. Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. Thank, thank you, you Miss Sahara. We You're appreciate you. Really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>